so happy that he agreed to come back. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Pritchard, aka Tim. <laughs> There's a lot of expectant faces actually. Yeah, good. Kind of reminds me a little bit about the first time I had a wank on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know the feeling, don't you? Yeah, there was a lot of expectant faces there, a lot of confusion. But um, I think the thing he needs to remember is after five minutes there was a rousing round of applause. So <laughs> do bear that in mind. I am now banned from the buses though. So uh, tonight I came in a taxi. <laughs> Banned from them now. <laughs> if you want to know what that looked like, where's the cock? There we go. <laughs> Good drawings, by the way, I'm enjoying that. Um, no, thank you, Tim, for having me back. I did do uh, a bit of spoken word before. I decided to try and do a bit of stand up. I don't fucking know why. Um, I looked into this sort of stand up, and the first thing I noticed is that most sort of the famous stand ups that you see, they do this, don't they? It's, they all have funny voices. Or like an accent or something. And I said this to my missus. And I was like, you know, I don't have a funny voice. She went, you do have a funny voice. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine that! (laughs) Cunt. I'm just kidding, she sat there. Next to my mum. (laughs) Jesus. The other thing is never do your first stand-up show in your hometown. I am from the Isle of Wight. I am from Ride. But I think I have moved away now. I've you know moved abroad and I live away now. Mm. And I think when you move away from the Isle of Wight, you have to sort of fly away a bit and get out of it. So it's nice to be over here from Portsmouth. Uh, <laughs> I didn't make it very far, honestly. But I do. I love to travel. And the reason I love travelling is I love airports. And the reason I love airports is that you can drink at any time of the day without feeling like a guy sat in Weatherspoons wearing a flag. <laughs> it's amazing. I call it travelling bits. <laughs> There he is. He knows what I'm talking about. I call it travelling beers. Travelling beers, you know, before you go travelling, you want to have a couple of pints, don't you? But it's only a couple of pints. I was travelling the other day, and, um, shit, there was a, I need to learn how to drink. It was quite an early flight up to Amsterdam, and I got into the bar for my travelling pints, and there was a couple of Welsh guys in there. They were the sort of lads you see that, a Russell's burger is a good home cooked meal. <laughs> They're absolutely doused in links. And? And they read. <laughs> you know, and they read all the lads' mags like Nuts, Zoo, and the Daily Mail website. And I knew they were Welsh because everyone in the fucking airport knew they were Welsh. When one of them quite quaintly went, Right, lads, I'm getting fucking wasted, isn't it? <laughs> those are the Dutch birds, I'm going to do their own back doors in Ali. <laughs> Those sort of lads. Real classy type. Now, the problem with two drunk lads like this drinking their way through Amy Winehouse's autopsy report is that you're going to get noticed and taken off the plane. And they were. They weren't allowed on the plane at all. And I wasn't sure what happened to them. We all sat down on the Ryanair flight until the captain made one of the best speeches I've ever heard. And he said, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard this Ryanair flight to Amsterdam. <laughs> Flying train this morning is going to be about an hour and five minutes. It's a lovely morning in Amsterdam. It should be a nice clear flight. And on behalf of all of Ryanair, I'd like to welcome you on board. And a big apology for the dickhead in row one who's passed out with vomit on his chest. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. He was vomiting on his chest as well. Two pints, you see. Travelling pints is only two pints. But the problem with having two pints is you need a piss. And in an airport, that means getting a connecting flight, doesn't it? Because the toilets are so fucking far away. However... Toilets and airports are clean. Now, ladies, you might not know this, but gents' toilets are fucking horrible. <laughs> horrible. If you do know what a gents' toilet looks like, have a word with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Now, ladies' toilets, you have sort of flower bowls and harpists. We have some sort of glory <laughs> holes and herpes. <laughs> it really is disgusting. <laughs> Case in point, right, where I work, I work for quite a good company, I'm in a good office block, etc. <laughs> now for the chaps, there's two cubicles. Now when I go in the, there in the morning, I look at the cubicle and I think, I might want to come back here later and sit down and play Angry Birds for 15 minutes. So I lift the toilet up, ladies. The lid up, even not the toilet. <laughs> I lift the lid up, I have a wee, put the lid back down, ladies. I wash my hands, mum. 
And I go back to work. I come back later, and I think that everyone else is going to be thinking like me. You'd think that. When I get back in the afternoon, fuck, it looks like Michael J. Fox and Muhammad Ali have been playing swords. There's piss everywhere. I don't understand it. It's disgusting. But airplane toilets, sorry, airport toilets, they are clean. It's probably all the immigrants, isn't it, Daily Mail readers? Coming over here and cleaning our fucking toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Two pints, sir. That's all you need is two pints. Two pints is from the airport because it chills you out, doesn't it? It, it, it eases the nerves. Because you see it on the news, don't you? All these disasters. And you think, it's never going to happen to me. You see all these horrible situations going on. You think, it's never going to happen to me. But then one day, you lift your bag onto the scales and it's three pounds (laughs) over. Fifteen pounds a fucking kilo! Come on, easy, Jeff. I can get hard drugs cheaper than that. <laughs> I don't, Mum. <laughs> Should have rewritten. <laughs> I don't do drugs. <coughs> oh, <British dog. laughs> no, 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 no. But it's, it's crazy. You're always overpacked, aren't you? Five days in Benidorm, where all you're going to do is wear your Speedo, and you somehow manage to over-fucking pack. Judy! Well, I need a wrench set for the all-inclusive. No, man, don't be so daft. They won't have one of them in the airport. Of course you need it. Pack the gun. Why is it northern? <laughs> that is my northern. Do you want to have a better one? Yeah, it's like, why northern? <laughs> this is what I've given you for this gig. Why northern? It's because you're all classless cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you. That's the biggest laugh <laughs> Next time I just I'm going to I am now. Donna's going to sit right here. Oh you. my god, sorry Donna. Some of you are classes. Some of you are bloody lovely. Yeah, you yeah. have to. You found out, did you? Are about. you sure he's yours? You should have drowned him at birth. <laughs> 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 the funny thing is, Donna has a wonderful poem. <laughs> about all the sperm and you were the first. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Donna, I was the first. So anyway, travelling beers in the airport. The one place you need that for, though, is security. Because security is the one thing that gets you really nervous. And quite rightly so as well. Do you see, about a month ago, there's a German woman who snuck onto a plane without a ticket or a passport. That's quite scary, isn't it? Turns out it's the second time she did it that day as well. She was there at 8am putting fucking towels on all the seats. <laughs> there's 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 no, not really. She was uh, she was considered a bit of a terrorist threat, and then they realised that her 50 mils of deodorant were in a little clear bag, so she was cleared. That's fine. That is a joke, obviously. German, hey! German women don't wear deodorant. <laughs> no, it, it, security makes me panic a little bit, and I have a little bit of a natural insecurity when I go through security. And uh, I would call it my natural insecurity. People that know me might call it being a twat. And uh, I was going through a while back and uh, got selected for a pat down because I'm a very sort of, you know, white middle class man, but I'm going through as if I'm the fucking biggest terrorist in the world. I'm panicking, I'm sweating. And I got selected for a pat down and the guy's working his way around here, etc. And I just looked down at him quite stupidly, possibly. I went, could have at least taken me on a date first. <laughs> he didn't find it very funny either. <laughs> Having said that, he did then sort of take me on a date. Took me into a little room, took me trousers off, fondling me balls, and I even got a finger up the arse. <laughs> if I'd have had a couple of beers, that would have been a really good one. <laughs> Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Over to you. <laughs> Just around, you know, I know you asked me to get a word in. You bought it. I just felt it was a bit too yeah. far. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tippers. God bless you for making the very nervous, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is.